Well, it's uh, been a few days since I've sent a video out to you all. I've tried to keep in touch with emails and notes and to get you ready for Sunday. This Sunday is going to be really good, I think. We've done a lot of preparation, getting musicians ready and music ready. Uh, and Palm Sunday, even though we're not going to be together, is going to be pretty awesome, I think. So start getting ready for it now. Get some bread, whatever bread is common to your house. It doesn't have to be special or fancy bread. Whatever is appropriate to your moment. And get ready some juice. Or or if you choose, you can even use wine this week. Uh, so get ready for it. I hope you're all doing well. I have missed you all so terribly. Um, and look forward to the time we can be back to again, again together. I'm been reading the daily lectionary day by day. Today's gospel is from my favorite gospel, the gospel of Mark. It's the 10th chapter. It's actually the very first bit of scripture I ever preached a sermon on. So it's Mark chapter 10, verses 17 through 31. Listen now for the word of the Lord. As he was setting out on a journey, that's Jesus, a man ran up and nailed before, kneeled before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. But you know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. The man said to him, Teacher, I've kept all of these since my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, give money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Now, when the man heard this, he was shocked, and he went away grieving, for he had many things, and he was very rich. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were really surprised at this, and they said to one another, well, then, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it's impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we've left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, truly, I tell you, there is no one. There is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers, sisters, mothers and children and fields and persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first. It's shocking news. I mean, the first thing, I mean, it's shocking uh, stuff that Jesus is saying here, especially for American culture, where we measure everything based on how much we've accumulated, how much stuff do we have and hold, how rich are we compared to the person next door? It seems to be maybe our highest standard for the most part. And Jesus is saying, no, that's not the game I'm telling you to play. In fact, I'm not telling you to play a game at all. I'm just telling you to do the right things. And it has nothing to do with money and it has nothing to do with your stuff. Life is more important than stuff. We don't really always get that. I've been surprised in the last few weeks to, to hear our national leaders suggesting that in order to save the economy, we should just let the elderly and the medically fragile go. They can just die and then our, our economy will recover. And that's really the important thing, which seems to be completely contrary to Jesus, who went into the temple courtyards and turned over the tables of the money changers. Jesus would never say, sacrifice human life in order to save the money changers. And so neither can we. All life is valuable. The youngest to the oldest of us have value. And we will never inherit the kingdom of God if we think it's the money changers we have to save. I encourage you to be beacons of light this week to proclaim the opposite, to tell the world that there are more important things than our stuff, that what matters are our lives. I think of Mr. Rogers. He said to a gentleman he was having a conversation with, you know who the most important person in the world is right now? 
And the person said, I don't know, who is the most important person? And Mr. Rogers said, you, you're the most important person. You're the most important thing in the world to me right now. What would it be like if all of us could have that, that sense? What if all of us could live that ethic where everyone we talked to knew that in that moment, there was nothing else in the world more important to us than them? Not politics, not the economy, nothing. Just them. Jesus loved you with that intensity. Let us therefore go out and love the world with that same intensity. In the meantime, remember that you are beloved child of the covenant, sealed in the Holy Spirit, and marked as Christ's own forever. Trust in the Lord. Believe the science. Stay at home. Amen.